All right, next we're gonna start dropping some fonts in here. We just do this under the insert tab. There's a text box option. Uh, when you drop these in, they're gonna by default have this white background and an outline. You can just in the formatting pane, remove the background and remove the outline. Uh, drop your font in there. And then when you're editing the size and style of fonts, you just do that under the home tab in the font editing area here. It's important to make sure we always have enough contrast, make things big, bold, clear, easy to read. And font size can reflect how important something is or how much attention you want to give it. So don't be afraid to treat this a little more like designing a PowerPoint slide in terms of font choice. You don't need to be nervous to like have it a couple different font colors and styles here. You can get creative with it. Now through the magic of editing I'm going to jump forward after I've done this manual process of inserting each piece of text. I just don't want you to have to watch me go through that whole process and I'll explain the font choices and everything at that point. And ta-da, we have our fonts here. So let me just walk you through this a little bit. A couple of things to keep in mind. One, we have contrast here. So we use a light font on a darker background and a dark font on a lighter background. You'll notice that these fonts are not, in this case, a black font specifically or a super, super dark font. It is a green. And that's just to get it to kind of match our overall look and feel, make the whole thing feel kind of cohesive. In this case, the hex value is uh, 3DA4. For a B if you want to try to replicate that at home. I've also given some metric examples here. This is where our actual metric is going to go. These metrics are in text boxes which are going to be pointed to our data. I'll explain how that works in a little bit. I've used a different larger lighter font for the metric as opposed to the title so that you can kind of tell them apart. And again, I kept the color kind of in this color scheme. It's this nice light kind of green color. And for those following along at home, that is a 67D1BA hex value for that one. Now I got all my labels in, I kind of know where everything's gonna go. It's a good place to start adding in our, our charts, visualizations, and really start building this thing out. So to build all this out, we need to actually have the data. That data is gonna be in the form of our pivot tables, which is pulling from, if you remember from before, our raw data, our big table that we created that has all the stuff we're using for this whole project. The example we did before was sum of sales over time, and I'm just going to give you a little example of how we visualize this. So we can click into this pivot table, go to the insert tab, pivot chart. It's going to drop a chart in for us. And for our sales chart, we want it to be a line chart. So we're going to click the line, go to design, change chart type, and turn it into a line chart. Great. Now I'm going to cut this, just command X or whatever to cut and then paste it over and then just kind of size it up, get it in there. I'm going to remove this legend because we're going to label it separately. I'm going to remove this title because I already have a title. And now every single time we create a chart, there's a little procedure we do. So we removed all the labels we don't want. We need to click into the chart overall, not to a specific series, but the overall chart. So kind of click around the edge of the chart, hit no fill, no line. So we don't have a background. We have made the background with our cards. So we want this transparent as much as possible. There is always kind of a balancing act in how many labels or how much labeling to include in whatever you're building and how small to make those labels so they're readable. I've made these a little small. They're a little hard to read because we're showing years and years of monthly data here. Uh, I think in this case it's going to work because we'd be displaying this pretty large. Somebody could always zoom in if they need to, but always be mindful of size of the text you put on the page and the contrast of the text because it can be difficult for people to read. If there's an element you want to add to your chart, just click into it, go to the design tab, add chart elements in the upper left, and you can add in labels, titles, grid lines, all sorts of different things, drop lines, really cool stuff. A lot of people just don't realize how many chart features there are in Excel and how much you can customize them. So just getting familiar with what's in these menus really goes a long way. I'm gonna see what this would look like with labels. So the labels are crowded and they're not really readable, which means we probably wouldn't include these labels in this case. Um, I do have a little workaround for this though, and I'm gonna show that to you here. A lot of times our numbers are too big to properly show, like you see here. It's crowded, it's unreadable, it doesn't work. I'm gonna delete those labels. We're gonna go back to our pivot table. We're gonna go over to our pivot table fields over here, click into some of sales with field settings, go to number, and we're gonna turn this into a custom number format so that it shortens it. So I'm adding our custom number format here. This is essentially gonna say, round it down to a single decimal place and put an M, a K, or a B for thousands, millions, and billions. Um, this works because my data fits in that range. It will not work all the time. And if you want to do this yourself, just you can just Google shortening numbers in Excel MKB custom number format. You'll find an example of this, uh, but it's it's 
it's a helpful thing to kind of have as a tool whenever you need to shorten up labels. All right, so we've shortened these up now. Let's go back over to our chart and let's do the same thing. We're gonna go to design, add chart element. We're gonna add labels here. Let's see what that looks like. So still a little crowded, but a lot more readable now. And if we reduce the size a little bit, I think we can get those to a point where they might actually be helpful. And I think as we build this chart out, we may actually reduce the uh, period of time shown, which is gonna help with this as well. So I'm just gonna leave that. We'll make a couple other adjustments. Uh, to change the color of our line, we're just gonna click into the line, go to format data series and go to line and solid line, and then just find the color we want for it. And you have to also change the the color of the marker. Just click over to marker. I'm gonna give this a solid fill in the same color with no border. And I'm actually, I typically like to increase my marker size a little bit so they're a little more visible. Um, I like that, but I might make it a slightly darker green so it shows up a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. So we switch over to the darker green. I like that. All right, let's move on to the next chart type. Uh, you might've seen a double donut in the uh, example we showed of this dashboard. I'm gonna show you how to do that double donut chart. Uh, I think it's just a nice one for this type of data. Explain why. I just show you the whole process. So we have our pivot table here. I'm actually just gonna copy paste this pivot table, grab the whole thing, copy it, paste it. We are going horizontal with our pivot tables. We're laying them out next to each other. And it's really important that we do that. If a pivot table is stacked one on top of another vertically, if the top one expands and overlaps with the one beneath it, they break. So if you know that your data is gonna get more rows, taller and not get wider, then you need to do them side by side. In this new pivot table, I'm gonna go over here and I am going to just take out years. Uh, we don't actually need it for this one. Uh, we don't even need order date. What we're gonna do is instead just do sum of sales, sum of profit, and we're gonna update the profit format here. And we're actually gonna update sales as well. We want a whole number for this one, I believe. And we do want a thousand separate, all right. Uh, sorry, and we're just gonna update the format here. We're gonna leave this with a dollar in currency format with negatives. Okay, good, okay, okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing to sum of sales. So they match, and you'll notice I do a lot of copy pasting and I just to save time if I know I've got one pivot table close enough I'll just copy paste it over so I'm not starting from zero now there's one thing we want to add here we want to break down this data by product segment that's what we did in the example here so I'm gonna just add product segment in to our pivot table selection here for the rows give me just a second and that generates this new table for us. And this should work for our donut chart. So I'm gonna click into our pivot table, go to insert, go to pivot chart. Now, of course, by default, it's always gonna give you a line chart with this kind of default style. It's easy to change, but just remember, you're not stuck with the one it gives you by default. You go to the design tab, hit change chart type. We are gonna do a donut. Excellent, and then we're gonna click our other series and turn that into a donut. And you may need to click into your donut, go over to the right to your format data series panel here and change the donut hole size because they may be overlapping each other by default at first. So now we've got our double donut, we just need to start styling it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut and paste this over and we will start making this look pretty. Okay, so obviously we're removing the labels we don't want, we're removing our background color, we're removing the outline, we're doing the whole shebang. Okay, and then we're just trying to get sizing rough where we want it here. Um, I will probably have to adjust the size of the hole in the middle of the donut uh, if I want this to not overlap my text. And also just for the sake of editing, I'm gonna get these uh, numbers here and I'm gonna move them forward so that they're not behind the chart because I'm gonna wanna edit these and move them around. So we just, I've hold it, held shift, clicked on each of them. I'm gonna right click them. I'm gonna say bring to front and that's just gonna make sure they're on top of the chart, not behind it. Great, now we can edit them with the chart uh, behind them. So I get my chart roughly where I want it, and then I'm going to select these again and move them into the right position. Ah, deep sigh. This looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. Now we got to get our colors right, and I'll tell you a little bit about that process. So each series in your donut, or each piece of your donut, can be edited independently. I don't like any of the default color palette options right now. You could use one of those under the design tab. You'll see a bunch of color options, but it's just not my style for this. 
So I'm gonna have to do it manually, and that can take a little while, but it's worth it. And you can always reuse these colors later on. So we click into one segment and we're able to edit the fill for just that one segment. We can set up a gradient, we can set up whatever we want in it. In this case, I'm gonna be doing a pretty saturated bright green color. And um, what I will sometimes do on this is I'll just use the transparency to get the a level of transparency right for what I'm trying to do. Um, in this case, we're gonna use less transparency because you'll see there's a series behind it and we don't want that to show through. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go through each of these just like I showed you one by one, I'm gonna update all the colors and then I will walk you through how I chose those colors, what they are, etc. Okay, so I've got these colors roughly updated and matching for the inner and outer rings and I need a little contrast between the two of them so you can tell them apart because we're trying to show ratio of sales, ratio of profit between these two categories and those are two different metrics. So obviously they need to look a little different. So for this inner ring, I want this one to be a little darker essentially. So I just am going into my color picker going more colors and then you'll have a little ability to select how dark a color is. So we're just gonna make this one a little darker, hit okay, and see how that looks. Yeah, okay, I think that could work. So we're gonna do the same thing on the next color and so on and so on. Uh, one thing I tell people, like if you're struggling with this and it's not looking the way you want, try a couple of times. Even I don't get it right the first time. Um, it's easier for me right now because I've done this dashboard before, so I have a jumping off point. If you were doing your own dashboard for the first time, even for me doing it for the first time, well, it'll require a little bit of testing, a little finagling, try a little darker, try a little lighter, try adjusting the transparency, try making it more or less saturated. Try a couple times and just go with the one that looks and feels right. That's a big part of this, just with color picking. Colors have a lot to do with feeling. It's There is a little science behind it and technique, but a lot of it really just has to do with whatever feels good in that, you know, in, in the context of your design. Uh, you'll also notice here I added a legend in. I did need labels to explain what they're broken down by. Um, and I'm gonna add in a little extra something here, which is I need to show which of these rings is sales and which one's profit, right? Because if that's not clear, this doesn't make any sense. So under the insert shapes option, I'm adding in just a little elbow connector here. I'm just gonna use that and style it just to make it look nice. I'm gonna make it white. I'm gonna make it a little thicker. And I like using the dash type option, giving it a little dash. Uh, and what I will also do sometimes is you can use begin arrow type and end arrow type and just add a little dot at the beginning and end. So it kind of, I don't know, I just feel like that makes it feel a little bit more like a technical diagram. <laughs> And, you know, just another little detail here, sales and profit. I just want to have a little separator between them. So I'm just going to insert a line here, Put that in, get it in the right spot, and then just make it a color that kind of fits in with the design. Um, just a little visual separation, I think, is helpful here. Okay, we've got a beautiful chart now. It looks great. Great double donut. And now we can move on to all the other ones. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready for one of the trickier chart types. In fact, we have two tricky chart types here that we're going to get into. So one is the geo chart. So if you've ever tried to create a pivot table for a geo chart, you will have learned you cannot power a geo chart via a pivot table. And I'll also mention if you're not on Office 365 or Microsoft 365, you may not even have the option to insert a map chart or a geo chart. So you can skip this one if you need to and just put something else in there. Don't worry. Uh, but for everybody else, I just want to show you this process. So first things first, we're just going to we're going to start with a pivot table uh, and I'll explain how we make this work in a second. So we've just dropped in a pivot table. We're going to put in state because this is broken down by state and we're going to put in sales. And then obviously, of course, we're gonna take the time to update our number to be in the right format. Now this can't be used. If we try to highlight all this, yeah, hold on. If we go to insert and we hit maps, it's gonna throw an error. You can't create this chart type with data inside a pivot table. So we are going to duplicate this table and we're gonna use that duplicated table as our source of data. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna put in this little if is text statement. Uh, you can read this, copy it down if you want. All this is essentially doing is saying, if the thing here is text, put the number in, if not, put a blank, and this is just gonna help us throw less errors. I don't know exactly why this works, but it does seem to. Uh, oh, and of course, don't be silly like me, make sure you use the right cell reference. And then next to it, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do is number instead of is text. Great. Click both these, drag them down. There's only 50 states, so I'm just gonna drag it down to the 50th spot here. Oh, and I'm also, it's important when we're doing this to remove the grand total. So if you click into your actual pivot table, go to design, go to grand totals and off for rows and columns. I'm also just gonna copy paste over this header here. I'm gonna highlight all of this too, and I'm gonna turn this into a table. Alrighty. So now with this table, if we highlight the whole thing, go to the insert tab, we can hit 
the maps option. And what do you know, we got ourselves a map. So same thing as always, we cut this and paste it over, get it sized properly, remove our title, remove our background. All right, and we got a nice little chart here. Now, I don't want this to be blue, I want it to be green. So I'm gonna click into the series here. It's a little tricky sometimes to select these, but once you get into it, it should give you the option. And you'll know you've clicked into the series properly because you'll see this little icon over here on the right. Okay, and we are gonna do our lowest value is like I believe a similar color to the background there. Uh, that looks okay. And then our highest value, we're gonna do like a much more dark. Yeah, that should work. And again. And this is one of those things adjust as necessary and one other thing don't you don't just do your changes under this for the field map this is for your minimum maximum values it's like a gradient so your lightest color in this case is your lowest value your darkest color is your highest value but you your overall fill color here is what's going to show up for items that have nothing in them so i'm going to actually do no fill for items with nothing in them so that they don't really show up at all if you want to get a little fancy with this you can also add in like a shadow effect that is going to give you uh, this kind of shadow look, which kind of gives you a little bit of uh, kind of like a 3D look. You don't necessarily need this. I'm not sure if I really want it in this case, but it's just an option that's available to you. And voila, we've got ourselves a geo chart. I may adjust these colors as we go, but at least you have a sense now of how to add something like this to your dashboard. All right, time for tricky chart number two, profit history. Now, if you remember, our profit history has green bars for uh, positive pro profit and red bars for negative profit. That is a little trickier to do than you might think, and I will show you the whole process here. So to start, we're gonna have to create a pivot table for profit. I'm just gonna copy our old sales pivot table, select the whole thing, copy it and paste it over, and I'm going to swap out sum of sales for sum of profit. Do, there we go. As always, we are gonna get that data into the right format for us. Currency, there we go. Okay, now here's how we're gonna do this. Profit over time is great. Profit over time, though, there is no way in Excel for us to insert a chart that has a different color just for the negatives right now. We just don't have that option. So what we're gonna have to do is something a little tricky. We're gonna have to have two series, one series only for positive values and one series is only for negative values. So what we're going to use is a calculated field. This is something a lot of people don't learn about with pivot tables, but it's super useful. So under pivot table analyze, you're going to see a fields, items, and sets list, and there's going to be a calculated field option. We're going to drop this in. So this one we're going to call positive. It's only our positive values. Our formula is going to be essentially an if statement. If profit greater than zero, profit. Otherwise, zero. That's that's what this is telling us here. Um, making sure that profit actually references the thing we want it to, meaning we wanna make sure that profit is actually one of the values listed here. And if we hit okay, excellent, it works. So you see we have only positive values, then for negatives, we have a zero. That's what we want. So we also have to do the same thing for the negative values. So we're gonna add another one, go back up here to do calculated field. But this time we're gonna switch our little thing around so that it is if profit is less than zero, show it. Otherwise show zero hit okay great and let's get rid of our old value sum of profit here because we only want these new ones so we have our two calculated fields here showing the series so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to insert I'm gonna go to pivot chart and if you look closely here you'll be able to see that our negatives are a different color than our positives and we can now style them independently so we're gonna cut and paste this over get it roughly the right size get it in there like that get it in there like that okay so let's start styling this thing so of course we go through our whole process we take out the background we take out the border so we want to click into our series here and we want to reduce the gap width that's going to make it a little wider easier to see easier to do all of our formatting and I'm going, mm, call it 50% in this case. Okay, so now I can click into this bar and I can turn this into a green color. Uh, however we wanna do that, I might change the angle here. Um, and then I can click into our orange bar and this can be tricky. Clicking into the orange bar can be hard because the orange bar is only plotting negatives which are hidden behind this. So we may actually have to remove our labels first, then click the orange bar and we can change this to some kind of red color. And obviously we might play around with this 
color a little bit to get it right. But essentially you see here, we now have a chart that has greens for positives, reds for negatives. We can do all of our fine tuning and this is gonna pretty much get the job done. I'm gonna go back here as well. Uh, when I click into the chart, I'm gonna go to the design tab, add chart element. I'm gonna add our labels back in that we just removed. Uh, we want our axis, primary horizontal, add it back in. Okay, so that's a really useful trick by the way. If you're trying to separate your negative and positive values, you just make two separate columns like we did before so that you can have separate series and then you can style them totally independently.